in the word of prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come at this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. We come, Lord God, grateful for how you blessed us, grateful for your compassion upon us, grateful, Lord God, for salvation that was made possible through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask now, Lord, you would look upon us as we prepare to hear your word being preached in our hearing. We ask, Lord God, that you would just bless mightily uh, those who will listen. I pray, Father God, that you would enable them to hear them, not only with their ears, but enable them to hear with their hearts. I, look, I pray that you would look on me who stands dependent upon you. I pray, Father God, that you would lift me out of self and then fill me full of yourself. Enable me, Lord God, to proclaim your word as you would have me to proclaim it. And then, Lord, we realize that when this life is over, we ask, merciful Father, that you would receive us into your kingdom. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. From the major prophet, Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 11th verse, you will find these words. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And we want to place special emphasis on the last part of this particular verse, which says to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. And from this we want to use the title, Waiting for Restoration. Waiting for Restoration. Yes, indeed, it is true, my beloved, that we all are waiting for an expected end to this pandemic. When you consider all of the complaining we did before this pandemic, we certainly can say that life was sure better back then than what it is now. For it's true that we don't care for social distances because we feel that humans need interaction with each other. It is the way we were created. It's part of our DNA to be social beings. And then there is the emotion of impatience, which has plagued the spirits of many. And it's natural, my beloved, it's natural to be impatient. Impatience is the driving force behind our desire to normalize our activities. And for those in this country who are still unemployed, laid off, or furloughed, impatience is coupled with the need to restore financial security for ourselves as well as for their families. For you see, after three months of sh shutdown, the states were cautious about uh, reopening. No one wanted to see a resurgence of that dreaded virus. It is the case that most concerned people who are on their guard, and rightly so, they should be. Because with no vaccine as of yet, it's for certain that there will be openings and closings back and forth many days across our country. For we are in the grip of an enemy who knows no boundaries. And yes, it's true, my beloved, that one of our most essential practices is separation. But have you ever thought about how God uses the effects of separation within his own will? When evil threatens, the Lord uses separation as a tool for restoration. He, did, he separated Noah by commanding him to build an ark to save a generation from evil. He separated Abraham from his country, from his kindred and his father's house to establish a covenant with him. He separated the Hebrews from their Egyptian slave masters to, to bring them out of Egyptian bondage. And most of all, he separated himself from his only begotten son as a price for our redemption. Now, when we look yet again at this matter of separation, I'm reminded of when the church at Corinth was struggling with sin. Immorality was running rampant. They were involved in every immoral practice that could ever be imagined. But Paul delivered a message from the Lord saying, Wherefore, 
Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not that unclean thing, and I will receive you. For you see, God is only able to restore us when we separate ourselves from sinful involvement. But now the question is asked, what should we do while waiting for restoration? First of all, my beloved, first of all, we need to seek a closer, committed walk with the Lord. But while we are absent from one another in our sanctuary, we need to be closely present with the Lord. Choir members, while you are absent from the choir loft, you need to be closely present with the Lord. Ushers, while you are absent from ushering the aisles of the church, you need to be guilty of being closely present with the Lord. And yes, all other ministries and congregants who are absent from your Sunday morning attendance, you should also be closely present with the Lord. For truly, this is uh, the perfect time to do more than just watch the news and our favorite TV programs. But it should also be a time for us to examine our relationship with the Lord. Well, it's a good time for us to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face. Well, it's a good time for us to purge ourselves from anything that separates us from the Lord. Before this pandemic, some folk may have said that they were so busy with heavy schedules and the daily activities of existence until they couldn't find any time to pray. Well, my beloved, the good Lord has now given you plenty of time to pray. But during this pandemic, if you are guilty of being or doing anything, it's for certain that you will be guilty of being fearful of this virus and prayerful for your safe outcome. Secondly, this pandemic shutdown time can be utilized to study God's Word, to understand His purposes. For in this day of much fake news and false rhetoric, we need to study and embrace God's Word like we have never done before. Why, preacher? Because it seems as though right is being buried and wrong seems to be taken over. It seems that right has been kicked to the curb and wrong has now taken the throne. But you see, truth crushed to the ground will rise again. And it's a truthful fact that no lie can live forever. For in these last and evil days, it seems as if truth has become an endangered species. That's why there's a great need to make God's word an integral part of your daily existence. For the psalmist said, the psalmist said in Psalms 119, that I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. For you see, instead of running around, acting and talking like we know more than Google, now is a good time to study to show thyself approval to God, a workman that needed not be shamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. For you see, adhering to the Bible is greatly necessary in order to deal with the many complex issues of life. But this book must be studied before you can know and practice the ways of the straight and narrow. The commands of this book must be obeyed before heaven can be pleased because his word even says that obedience is better than sacrifice. From this book you are encouraged to pray fervently and effectually before your prayers can avail much. But most of all, from this book, salvation's message about Jesus must be accepted before you can be born into God's heavenly kingdom. Finally, my beloved, finally, this pandemic shut down time while waiting for restoration is a good time to psychologically program yourself to be a better reflection of Jesus in your living. During your time off, from attending church, you no doubt have gained more sleep, and some of us no doubt have gained more pounds, but we should also gain a greater desire to be a better and consistent reflection of Jesus in our living. And one way we can accomplish this is to psychologically program ourselves to stay calm 
in the midst of crisis. Say no when confronted with temptation. Stand fast. In a time of trial and testing, maintain a pleasant personality and disposition. Refuse to repeat gossip and spread rumors which will reduce and prevent someone's character from being crippled. For to be a better reflection of Jesus in our living, we must be careful to help and not hinder, to lift up and not tear down. For in order to be a better reflection of Jesus in our living, we must try hard to respect and not ridicule, give and not gripe, serve and not make excuses, bless and not withhold your generosity. For these things can be accomplished if we have an unswerving faith in God. For you see, faith in God during this corona pandemic can be a wonderful weapon and is indeed a very mysterious weapon. I say faith is mysterious because no one can program faith. No one can hear faith. No one can touch faith. No one can taste faith. No even smell faith. Yet faith can move mighty mountains. Oh yes, can calm raging seas in our living. Faith in God can open up our understanding in the word of God. It can conquer hostile enemies. Faith in God can resist powerful temptations and can win spiritual victories. Well, you see, during these unpredictable days that we are currently existing in, and while we are waiting for our restoration, we need to embrace a faith that sees the future light in spite of the present darkness. We need a faith that can administer healing in spite of our present sicknesses. We need a faith that can visualize our crown in spite of our present cross. We need a faith that looks steadfastly unto Jesus who died one day for our sins on a Roman cross. And our testimony should be like that of the hymn writer who said, My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me when I pray. Take all of my guilt away, or oh, let me from this day be holy thine. God bless you, and may heaven forever smile upon you.